Hello pattern lovers, you're welcome and welcome back. It's yet another exciting tutorial and in today's video we'll be drafting this. So we are looking at an A-line short dress with a built-up neckline. The front neckline is lower but it's a built-up neckline and there is a cape going around the shoulder and there is also a sleeve curve. So if you want to learn how to draft all of this, do stick around and let's get right into it. So my pattern paper, I've gone ahead to mark out the important lines and at the shoulder, I left a space of about 2 inches, like 2 inches before I have my shoulder line. Then from that line, I have the bust point line, the under bust line, the waist line, the hip line and then the gown length. So the length of the gown is totally optional but one thing you have to do is to leave a space at the top of about 2 inches or more. So on the shoulder line, I'm going to take the shoulder measurement divided by 2. And I'll go down to the chest line and then get the shoulder measurement again on that point. I'll just try to have a straight line on both ends. Then I'm going to rule it out just like this. Now the next thing I'll do now is to get the neck width and I'm using two and half. You're going to use whatever you usually use for your total neck. Like the neck width for me it's usually two and half. Then I'll come here and go down to one and a half and that would be for the shoulder slope. I'm going to slant it this way to the neck width like this. The next thing I'll do now is to divide the bust measurement by four. Then I'm going to mark it here. I'll go to the waist and divide the waist measurement div uh, by four. The waist measurement divided by four plus one and a half. I'll be using that one and a half extra for the that intake. Okay, then I'm going to connect it this way. And to connect the armhole, I'm going to get the midpoint of this line like this. I'll mark it, then on that point, I'll go in by half inch. Okay, I'm going to first slant it to the shoulder tip this way. And then after that, I'll go ahead and curve the armhole like this. Now, I'm going to get the bust pan. That's like the nipple to nipple. I'll mark it on the waist line on the bust point and also on the gown length i'm using three and that for my size then i'm going to just um connect it straight and that would be the dart line which is the bust span from the waistline i'll go down six inches and that would be the dart length going to the down so on both sides of this um that line now i'm going to mark 0.75 and that's one and a half. I'm going to first connect it to the bust point this way on both sides. Then I'm going to connect it, like extend the dart down to the six inches I went down from the waistline. Okay, and that's it. So the one and a half that intake is the one and a half I added to the waist measurement on the side. Okay, now I'm going to come here from the shoulder slope down. I'll be marking inches then i'm going to give it a princess seam line okay you can decide to do a shoulder princess seam line but i choose to do armhole princess seam line okay and that's where the dart will be going now i'll come to the bust point line and come down one and a half and that would be for the bust dart okay the bust dart is very important now you can decide to tighten the under bust it's totally optional you can decide to also ignore it but in case you want to do it to come from the already existing that leg the that you already have there right you're going to go in like go out 0 0.375 you do 0 0.5, but i like to do 0 0.375 then from this other that leg on this side i will be going out half inch then i'm going to use my curve first i'll curve to the bottom point and i will extend that leg to the waist and then I'll do the same thing on this other side. And that's it. Okay. So by the time you open up the wart, you're going to try the bust that to that point. Or when you open up the armhole princess line, you're going to transfer the bust that to that point. We'll get to all of that. Okay. For now, I'll do the gun length and take the hip measurement divide, divided by four. Then from that point, I'll be adding extra six in measurement divided by four you add extra six inches six inches is like the standard for if you want more you can do more 
then you're going to connect it like this the um, curve placement is totally optional you can say that right it doesn't make any difference then on this point i'll be coming up one inch just to blend in that part just so it's not too pointy to put it go front like that and that's pretty much about all of this the next thing now is to do the built up neckline and you'll be needing any object that will help you indicate the angle 45 so i have it on this pattern master and i also have it on this curve whichever one you want to use but use any measuring rule that will help you um indicate angle 45 because you'll be needing it at this point so i'm going to use the pattern master and there's a v here on this uh, measuring rule you're going to place that v on the neck width okay whatever you usually use as the neck width for your total neck you're going to place the v on your measuring rule there like the v point and then you're going to mark the direction of the angle 45 if you have this uh, rule you will know what i'm talking about then i'm going to mark a line across going to that point this is just to help you just so you don't overdo it like you do it in a way that you to follow the your neck shape i hope you get that now on that line i'll be going up one and a half you can also do one inch what is on your thumbnail one inch one and a half will give you that okay but i choose to do one and a half so on that line i'll mark my one and a half then i'll start from the shoulder line and go down to how deep i want the front neckline to be and i will be um, using so this for the neck depth works for me then if you also notice the v is not like a straight v or like a very smooth v so you're going to place your curve until you have your desired um shape of v but just know that is not the kind of like a smooth kind of v then i'll be blending in this part just so i uh, while sewing it it will not be hard for me okay make sure it's not really too curvy just like blend it in to the one and a half we went up okay then i'm going to like place my curve like my desired v shape okay and that's it for that now for the cape i'll just be extending the shoulder slope line i'll just go ahead and extend it this way then from the shoulder tip like this i'll be coming in by one inch okay one inch there then i'm going to just place my glue like this going to the neck depth but it's going to stop about 0 0.25 from the neck depth like the neck depth line okay then from that point from where this line stops i'll be going down by 4.25 go ahead and do use whatever measurement you want to use at that point depending on how curve like how pointy you want it there but 4.25 works for me then on that point i'll be going in by one inch and then i'm going to connect from here to here just like this yeah then i'll come to the shoulder from the one inch i came in i'll be adding like going out 3.25 right and that would be the cape width yeah the cape height <laughs> then i'll place the curve this way just to give it this shape if you notice on the thumbnail it's like it's curved like this it's not really straight or really round on that point they give it a slight curve there and that's what this my curve did for me okay and this is the essence of just coming down three inches from the shoulder for the princess line just so the cape would like sort of cover it a bit and then looking at the dress you will know the direction of the that yeah so if you decide to also place your curve this way to cover the cape it will even cover the dart more and then looking at it one will know the direction of the dart line okay now i'm going to take a fresh paper i'll place it under this pattern paper going to the cape side then with the help of my tracing wheel i'll be tracing out just the cape part okay i'll go ahead and trace it out smoothly then 
I'll go ahead and cut it out. You can't see it, but I can see it clearly. So I'm going to just cut out what I traced out. And that's it. Next thing now is to go ahead and cut the pattern. But first, I will be opening up the princess line. Like the armhole princess line. All the way to the bust point this way. So I can be able to close the bust that. But then I tried to close the bust that and it was a bit difficult because the paper here is much. I'm just going to fold this way. Then what you see me doing here is like cutting out the pattern. Though not all of the pattern. You see what I did there, right? So now I'm going to place the folded part to the bust point line. Just as you can see me do it here. Then I'm going to use my cello tape to hold it down. And you can see that i already transferred this that now to the armhole part yeah and that's pretty much about it now i'm going to blend in the side because it's no longer straight and that's it the next thing now is to just go ahead and cut this out and be careful while cutting the neckline just so you don't cut what is not necessary you can see how smooth it is on that point. Then I'm going to cut the rest of the pattern out. So if you decide to go for what is on the thumbnail, you're going to cut your dart just the same way we have it on the pattern. But if you don't want to have that line all the way down, just go ahead and stop your dart at the 6 inches we have as the dart length from the half length. I hope that is clear. But from what is on the thumbnail, you are supposed to cut the dart all out. You're going to have that line there. So I'm going to just cut out what I have on the pattern because that's what is on the thumbnail. Right? And after cutting it out, this is what it looks like. I'm going to keep this aside. Then we'll work on the back pattern. So here, I already have the necessary lines, which I also have 2 inches space from the shoulder. I'm measuring from the shoulder to the waistline. You see, I have 15 and a half against the 17 inches I used as the half length for the front. The one and a half is what I used as the bust that. You already know how to do all of that, okay? Then for the length of the gown, it's totally optional. But from what is on the thumbnail, 10 inches from your hip line down will give you that length. So if you want it more, go ahead and do whatever length that you want. So I'm going to get the shoulder measurement and the chest line. Then I'm going to just rule it out like this. Then I'm going to come to the center, like from the center back on the waistline, I'll be coming in by one inch to contour the center back okay this one inch is because there's not going to be any that on this back pattern because i didn't see that there was that like that on the back before doing this so forgive me for that you're going to also have a princess armhole line for the back pattern I don't know if i'm making sense but you're supposed to have that but with this one inch i used to contour the center back i do not need any more that so if you want what is on the thumbnail go ahead and make a room for your that then i did the neck width of two and a half and the shoulder slope of one inch then you see me slant it to the neck tip like this the next thing now is to start from this center back contour line and take the bust measurement divided by four yeah the bust is 36 divided by four that's nine inches then from the center back contour line, I will take the waist measurement divided by 4. There is no that intake, so there is no that allowance. Then I will come to the gown length and take the hip measurement divided by 4 plus extra 6 inches. Then I am going to connect all these points like this. I am going now to come here, come up here by 1 inch just to blend in that part so it is not too sharp or too pointy okay and that's pretty much about this part the, and the next thing now is to curve the armhole just like this it's very simple now i'm going to also get the angle 45 of the neck width i'm placing the v on the neck width then i will mark the direction of the angle 45 and it's this point so i'm going now to have a straight line going to that point and that's it now on this new line i'll be going up 
one and a half just the same thing we use for the front part then measuring from the shoulder to that point is about one inch so i'll come to the center back and go up one inch just to have a straight line it's nothing serious if you can have a straight line without measuring it go ahead and do it but i want to make sure i have a straight line then i'll be coming down from that point half inch you can also do 0 0.375 or 0 0.25 just so you have a slight curve you don't have to make it obvious mine is obvious here but while cutting i made sure i didn't cut it in a way that it will be obvious that there is a neck curve there you can decide to leave it and not have it like go down at all then again I'm going to blend in this part and you see how I placed my curve okay that part is very important just so the sewing would be easy for you and the next thing I'll be doing is to follow the center back contour line and add my zipper allowance I usually use one inch for the zipper allowance go ahead and use whatever you usually use for your zipper allowance and follow the center back contour line and add it and that's exactly what I'm, I'm doing here so after that i'm also going to place my curve the same way i did while contouring the center back and connect out the zipper allowance and that's pretty much about the back pattern and then lastly from the neck i have to go down so i want the cape to sit which i did for and and five inches because i wanted to see how what the both of them would give me then from the shoulder tip i came in one inch then you see how i placed my curve to connect it so this is the four and a half and after connecting it i like what i have there so i'm not trying the five inches okay then from this four and a half now i'll be going down to 3.25 then i'm going to also extend the shoulder slope line just go ahead and extend it this way then from the one inch i will be doing 3.25 which is the cape height then i'm going to place my curve this way and i should have marked the 3.25 on the center back contour line just so it's easy for me and i just did that so i'm going to place my curve this way and um curve it out and here i'm trying to make sure it's not looking like there's a shortage anywhere which is what is on the thumbnail i was trying to avoid that here and at the end of the day you can see that there's a part looking that like it's shorter from the other part but that's by the way i'll place a fresh pattern paper underneath it then i'm going to trace it out if you don't want your cape to get all the way to the zipper allowance don't include the zipper allowance while tracing it out then you're going to indicate the center back and the shoulder that is very important okay so after all of that i'm going now to cut out the pattern just as you can see me do it here i will find a light in your soul i'll be and now after cutting it out this is what it looks like and then we are going to work on the cape again you're going to get a fresh paper and you're going to place the two cape on it match up the shoulder don't don't worry about the direction of the cape just make sure you match up the shoulders on the fresh paper and then you're going to tape it down i use my water glue then i'm going to blend it in see this part going to the neckline i'll blend it in this way take your time and do it like however you desire then from this new point now i'll be marking the 3.25 which we are using as the cape height right so i'll mark it here then i was i will also blend in this part like this so depending on how you blend the part going to the neckline it means how you're also going to blend this part going out of the shoulder I hope that is clear so just take your time and do it the way you like so after cutting it out i still see the need to like blend this a bit and i think i like what i have now and that's it the next thing now is this sleeve cuff and you're going to have your basic sleeve just a basic sleeve is 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 that simple <laughs> then i have this piece of paper I'm going to fold it into two like this and then i'll come to the sleeve 
from the hem i'll be going up one inch okay because if you see on the thumbnail the cape like the cuff is like one inch away from the sleeve hem so you're going to come up one inch from the sleeve hem then after that i will measure the width of this point now and i have about 3.75 so i'll come to this um piece of paper the height i'm using here is like five and a half but five inches works you just do five inches okay so i'm going to mark my 3.75 on this end then i'll come to this upper part and do 4.75 which is like adding one inch to what i measured on the sleeve i hope that is clear then i'm going to connect the two points like this the next thing now is to come to this folded part like this center part and you're going to determine the height of the cuff okay i want to do four inches so four inches here then i'm going to place my curve and connect it to this other end and you see that at the end of the day i use about five inches for the height and not the five and that i have initially can you see that so after cutting it out this is what it looks like and um the pointy part is going to come to the center of your sleeve like the folded part of your sleeve okay you're going to cut your sleeve on fold right so while placing this this pointed part is going to come to the folded part of the sleeve like the open part of the cuff will be going to the closed part of your sleeve i hope that is clear and you're going to remember that it's going to be one inch above the sleeve hem okay and it's going to be another color entirely from your main dress color and that's it for all of the pattern and at the end of the day we have cut out this um like the center front this is the center front which you're going to cut like the center part is going to be open you're going to have two pieces of this right you're going to cut this times two but if you don't want to go with what is on your thumbnail you're going to just simply cut this on fold then for the buttons the first two buttons will be coming one inch below the bust point that's where you have the first two buttons then the second two one inch below the under bust and then the third two buttons will be one inch below the waistline and it's going to be two so if you are cutting this times two it's going to be one on each side of the center front yeah then i have this side front which you're also going to cut two times of that so the front part will be four pieces total right then i have the back part which should also be four pieces if we are going for what is on the thumbnail okay but i didn't include that so i just have one piece which at the end of the day is going to be just two pieces for the back okay then i have the cape which will be going from the center back this way and it was at this point i realized i didn't cut out the excess i have on the center back of the cape right so this is the cape you are going to cut two pieces of that too and then i have this sleeve and then the sleeve cuff so in total you're going to have about 14 pieces of this if you are going for what is on the thumbnail right you're going to go ahead and transfer this to your fabric add the necessary allowance and happy sewing so with this we've come to the end of our studio let me know what you think in the comment section and let me know if you'll be trying this and i'll see you on my next one bye bye